Now we're live. It's probably it's hun- happening. Hungarian duck hunters. Hungarian duck hunters. That's my thought. Just what Isaac's talking about. He's talking about what we're carrying today, which is ammunition. Oh my god, I'm so excited. We're taking 20- oh my god. Oh my god. That. Whoa! <laughs> That's really neat. We've got our own little mini crane. Holy shit. This we is are the most this is Are we going to be able to offload? I, I have to drive really goddamn well, carefully. Well, maybe, or maybe we want you to explode. Anyway, hey, Nick's in the studio. Hi. Nick's in the studio. <laughs> the studio um, known as my room. <laughs> yeah, this the Nick known as Trotta. Uh, our friend Nick uh, is our guest today, uh, sitting in the not seat. Hello, everyone. Um, and shit. We've brought him here because we can. I think that's a good reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, as long as you have me around. Exactly. Uh, and Nick has a number of expertises. Uh, uh, well, I like to say well-informed practitioners. He's a, whoa, that's good. He's a man of many hats as well. Mm. Um, and so we're not actually clear on uh, on uh, on what he's going to discuss, or really what we're going we're to discuss. We're talking about theater. Yeah, I, exactly. I, that's what I thought. We're, we're talking, talking about, about theater. We're talking about the practitioners of theater because we never talk about theater on this. It's true. Why it's would the we one do that? that <laughs> why would anybody do? Well, that? maybe no. because one of us is in theater. Well, I, I'm sort of in theater. Well, yes, but that's a fair reason to talk about it. I guess. I mean, the, the thing about it is, that with almost everything else that we talk about, we can. I mean, there's at least the the possibility that somebody will have like you know, either seen the movie or played the game that we're talking about, or if they're particularly moved by a flight. Yeah, uh, can go out and then purchase the game and thing and thing, but you know they can relate to it, perhaps. Well, you know, but if we <laughs> like well, the theater, well, the, I mean, the, the the basic problem with with doing the theater as a fandom thing or as an internet thing is that it ain't a movable feast. No, it's a very site specific feast. It's a feast that is in many ways bolted to the floor. This I this is a thing. Oh my god, my headlights are on. This is a thing with theater. This is. Something I struggle with with theater because I like theater a lot. Yeah, Spam likes theater. I like theater too. Nick, but, do you like theater? Uh, you know, on good days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I've dedicated my life to it. In yeah, a lot yeah, of ways. yeah. And I feel like uh, one of the reasons I thought it would be interesting to talk about is because it is an ancient art art form. One might say the, the most, most ancient. ancient art form. I mean, you know, it, it, in in terms of uh, performance rather than theater per se. I've been but listening I, to a uh, to a, a BBC hybrid stand up and documentary show in which a, a stand up comedian turns classes turned classicist does information like edutainment stand up <laughs> shows about uh, about the the classic playwrights. Oh, I totally. Love. Yeah. Or listen to it. Well, I'll, I'll link you to it. Her, yeah, her, yeah, her. I mean, great. it's not, it's not all playwrights. It's some like other classic, classic, classicalists. But it was like Sophocles. Oh, that's great. Like, like the first episode. Linked in the description. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Natalie Haynes stands up for the classics. That's what it's called. Um, well, someone's got to. Yeah, you no. Know, and it's like Orpheus and Eurydice, mm-hmm. all that good stuff. The tragedy of Oedipus. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is. It was called one of the most perfect tragedies by by Aristotle himself. Indeed, I mean, and if there was a guy who was right about things, it was Aristotle. That's for sure. <laughs> well, actually, a dude you, you know, could trust. It's 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 one of the funny things. I mean, you know, the, some of the first and most famous uh, Western philosophers m- made a point of talking about the theater and why it's important and what it's meant to do. And uh, one of you know one of those people that's, that's sort of beginning the conversation was Plato in the Republic mm-hmm. when he's talking about the perfect state. Now. On, uh, Admittedly, he's a tad fascist about it. He seems to say <laughs> that um, a tad fascist that that, that, that <laughs> theater can only really in the, in the perfect society, theater should only be telling the truth at all times. Oh yeah, but I mean that was that was satirical. Yeah, that's what that's what I think. Yeah, and no, I, I think that there are a lot of people who misinterpret that to think that it's that somehow your, your, uh, your mouse it, thing does not seem to have helped there. Josh. No, it's yeah. not not doing what it's supposed to be. Doing. I'm a little concerned. This is a problem we've been dealing for, with for a long time. Yeah. The sticky wheel. We're a little hinky. And it's the camera. It's a little uh, laggy, What too. if I turn this off? I mean, that might help. That probably won't help. What did you do, even do then? I just turned off my touchpad. Oh, yeah, I'm sure oh, that'll that, help. That will help. Um, with all the detritus. <laughs> but, any, uh, but yeah, no, he, <laughs> Plato says similar things about music and that he's, he's very much, the, the, the Republic is very much about art for use. The utility yes. of art. Yes, but um, it's also. But I mean, yeah, one has to remember that he establishes in the beginning that this is the soul writ large. What is a perfect, 
person supposed to do for themselves. And uh, but on the other you know, hand, become an some, actor. Why not? Right. Why not? Why not? But the uh, but or, the other thing. But the other thing that you have to remember is that you know Plato had a wonderful sense of humor. I, I really don't think that he would that, that that based on all of his other writings, he's really advocating that. Society be divided into no, three ab- classes, and that, you know, not. and that, and that, uh, and that, the, the history, and that once we inevitably do that, you know, society will certain musical descend into tyranny. Certain or musical whatever. keys must be banned because they're too upsetting. Right, they, and, and they, they, get, so, they make the masses rile. This is uh, we've just brought you into the room, liter- and like this is instantly already the most highbrow episode <laughs> tracks that we have ever produced. Well, I'm glad that I have that <laughs> influence, but um. But, you, know, you are currently wearing a, a blazer and a. I'm not a wearing. Prof- this is not a blazer. The, well, well, I'm wearing a blazer. You are wearing, wearing a blazer. blazer. No, I'm, I'm not. Gosh, I'm, saying, I'm just saying. Jacket. I'm, not. I'm wearing a blazer. I'm wearing I'm a green jacket and a Homestuck shirt. I'm not home. Uh, you're not a home. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I'm you, not you, homebrow. You, you made, <laughs> hey, homebrow. <laughs> What's up, homebrow? <laughs> I've been feeling particularly middle brow today. Actually, I don't know. Ah, uh, mid cult, my uh, favorite. I've been I've been annoyed by by the high and the low today. Okay, then then we can stay mid cult. No, we don't um, we don't necessarily have to. Here here is a discussion prompt. Well, I I, I, I came with one. I, if you I, want I, to. I I was about to move on to a theater uh, to a theater the thing that was both germane both to Plato and in the theater. Yeah. But fine. Fine, Josh. <laughs> no, do it. Fine. I'm, I'm sure Why our audience is so wait, interested wait, 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 in what? this. Wait, calm down, calm down. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm separating them right now. And what I think we should do is also, we Josh all... and I never fight during no, this. And now, 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 now I'm already, this I'm already prompting this. But, but here's what I think we should do. I think we should all contribute our propositions, and we will and then decide we can put it to get to, a to vote. them. <laughs> <laughs> we can, you know, well, we'll determine the appropriate order in which to discuss. Yeah, I, I think I, so. I was going to make the connection between the idea that. That Plato is all about art for use, and that a th- another thing about theater that it's, that has tended to uh, uh, separate it from other art forms is that the strain of theater as a didactic rather than a purely artistic form Excellent. has been much stronger, I think, particularly over the last century than it has been for most other art forms. And then I was going to talk about Brecht. Well, yeah, I mean that's the central. Point of it. And I, and Sounds like a fucking grad thesis. But, but I mean, it, but it, it, I mean, it's very relevant because. Um, well, well. Let, but before I go on on that, let, let's hear what what Josh. What, what, what did Josh, you want? What Josh to say? say? I was going to ask a simple question, which it was. In 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 this age, <laughs> in this digital age of MP3, in this age of modern time, in this when you digital can't tell age of MP3s the ACs and from dot the move files that you watch on the wonderful QuickTime player, <laughs> terabytes. <laughs> Really when you d- when you can download an episode of Utena in a seventy megabyte WMA in eight <laughs> hours or less, exactly. See, this is the stuff I don't know. About. Does does theater oh, that's does theater have a more difficult time thriving in in this culture of permanent digital storage? Nick would be a very good candidate to. to I, I to no, I think that that's uh, that's extremely relevant as well. As you can see, I just I, I just yes, man. Um, Speak. But my my initial question, which I think it would be helpful to sort of determine all of these things, is what what is your definition? of what what is that? How would you put the most it, in most basic terms? Into okay, words? okay. There's a guy <laughs> or a lady. <laughs> or, no, uh, gender, oh, wow, gender, gender, gender neutral. Gender neutral guy. <laughs> there, there's. Isn't that defeat? The, I'm sorry. There's. A, that's not. There's a person <laughs> or persons who there's are performing right. live right. in a place mm-hmm. in front of. Other people who are not performing. So then, when Arcade Fire oh. performs at Coachella, is that theater? Um, oh yes, yes it is. Mm. I mean, if the, when the Flaming Lips do it, it certainly is, right? That's true. Yes. Um, so I think that there is theater as a description or theater as a proper noun, as a proper thing. You know, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm going to have to get like uh, I'm going to have to get something more specific. But the thing is that there's plenty of theater that is very very musical. Like I just went to saw an amazing show last night that was half just rock show. And like there are, there's a musical and there's an opera, you know. Which um, this is the thing in Abrams, right? Uh, the thing in Abrams, yeah, it was yeah. really good. I've I've talked about that on my Tumblr and on Facebook and stuff. Link in the description. Yeah, I, I would. <laughs> if, if there's anybody who watches this and lives in New York who doesn't follow me on Tumblr, 
that could find out about this show <laughs> somehow. Well, you can you can this link. How, you can link. This, this is how social media yeah, promotion can, works. I link, know about that. You link this. Uh, you have Facebook followers. You can link this episode of Trucks on your Facebook. Maybe we get some new. Uh, I have Facebook new followers. Audience. Is there such a thing as a Facebook friends? <laughs> friends. <laughs> oh no, I do. I actually no. You know, I realized this actually. I uh, you have I have a hundred and eight. Twitter followers. 118 Ooh. Twitter followers. Yeah, because, not weird. Yeah, be, oh, be, man, we're about to get plugged hard. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> now, I didn't even think about <laughs> promoting Euro Trucks. On, well, plugging for Euro Trucks. You absolutely ought to, man. Yeah, that's definitely something I should do. Euro Truck, excuse me. Simulator. Simulator. It's called Euro Talk Simulator. It's Euro yeah, Talk, okay. Our, 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 and that, yeah. you know, I don't even know the name of the show. Okay, so <laughs> neither do we. So, <laughs> in order to, in or, so, but in order, in order to get a, uh, in order to get a more useful definition of theater down, might I add that there is generally a story. Interesting. That's interesting. That's mm. the, the thing that separates it maybe from the series of vignettes. And what, before, before, what is before a story? You respond, before you respond to that, <laughs> I, I just want to establish that every time I, I try to answer this question, I always feel like a conservative jackass because it's just like, it, it, whenever it comes out of my mouth, you know, like, there's this limitation and that limitation, I always feel like I'm I'm oh, sort of oh. judging something as not being theater if it doesn't, uh, you know, oh, 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 yeah, dude, against whoa, whoa, yeah, just go yeah, ahead you know, you, you have to be more careful with that. Shit. My wheels are actually stuck inside of the divider. At this no, point. I saw I don't that. know that if I can pretty, continue. Oh, you're, you're glitching. Yeah, you yeah, you sort of, I might have to get towed. I don't know how the tow truck will deal with this, but I assume they can. Oh god, is that guy gonna run into me? <laughs> get towed. <laughs> get towed. <laughs> We're gonna get, get towed. Get towed. Oh, okay. oh boy. Break. Wow. Oh my god, he didn't. Whoa! Ooh, that's wow, he's he's slippery that one. All right, we're you're not even, you're not even damaged. That's lucky. That it's only fifteen hundred. You know, I'm here euros. for five <laughs> minutes and already we're. Well, we're gonna we're gonna be late bringing our ammo. Fifteen hundred euros is actually probably a fair price to tow a truck full of ammunition. The Hungarian duck hunters are gonna be very upset. <laughs> Why do you think it's like buckshot? That doesn't look like what yeah, you this carry. Because we're not running arms to Hungary. Well, you know, well, that's what it looks like we're doing. Uh, those if I were do, to look those at do that look truck. like like Half Life Two ammo crates. Yeah, they I do. Mean, <laughs> so these right, are like these are the like high tech energy weapons. Oh my god, we're way off. Oh course. fuck! <laughs> what the hell have we done? <laughs> They, okay. you I didn't know I was that right compelling. By Ludge. Why didn't they take you to Ludge? Okay, I think what we we might wow, have to do. Well pronounced. Thanks. Um, you know the what, what do you Ludge? say we go down this yeah, way? Yeah, we have to go to, down b to by, Warsaw. By a, by a, we could also go through here. That, that's not even Warsaw. Warsaw. That's, that's Wroclaw. Oh, it's Wroclaw. Why is this gray? Oh, because we haven't <laughs> because we've never been there before. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we're going. Go down let's here and let's go down discover. I might have to road trip to Wroclaw regularly while I'm doing this, just to. Yeah, all I'm right. sure I'm not being blown off course. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Excellent. Anyway, um, wow, that's, Jeez, where were we? I think in in 27 episodes, I've never seen you fuck up in that specific way before. Yeah, it's a new one. Mm. It's all Nick's fault. It is. Yeah. I, I take full responsibility. Uh, but uh, anyway, you anyway. were about to say your your definition or you were questioning. No, I, what was, is story. I was just going to facetiously further ask for compounding <laughs> definitions into forever. How about you? You you uh, take a risk and tell us. Actually, it's recalculated my route, which is exactly what we plan on doing, so that's cool. Fantastic. You're, it's like we have GPS or something. Or something. Or something. I'm sorry, what, what was that question? What is there? your definition? Of theater? Of theater. I, if I, you were to, if I you were generally to agree with Isaac. With Isaac? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well. And, well, mine is... Um, uh, Although, uh, let me just add... If nobody's that, wearing tights, it's not theater. <laughs> that's definitely true. Let me just add quickly that not it, when it comes to questions like this, um, I, I tend to prefer as broad a definition as possible. Gen yeah. Generally, I feel if the creator of a thing wants to I, I, I believe theater. we decided that a Choose Your Own Adventure book was a video game last time we had this discussion. Or at so. least a, a game, right? Right. Well, you know, that's the question is the level of interaction. But, are, but is that... But you want... But I guess what you're trying to establish is you agree with Isaac... As long as there is a flexibility to um, yeah, the, the only time I'm likely to start disagreeing with someone's definition of theater is if it if it starts to like if it starts to determine that some some things that want to be called theater pieces are not in fact theater pieces. That's that's the only reason I would really have for objecting to any definition of theater. Interesting. Perhaps the world is a stage. Yeah, <laughs> it has been said. I, well, that, that's the thing. It's like, as you said, I think we want to resist being prescriptive as conservative. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. fuck tarts. Yeah. Fuck tarts. Well, Thank then, you. Right. Fuck tarts. Right. And there are plenty like of them out there. We don't need to add to that. This, the, the hard T at the end of that is absolutely key. Fuck tarts. Fuck tarts. Well, like, you know, because Shakespeare would approve. Yes. Fuck and, talk. Uh, <laughs> Damn I, it, snatch pastry. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, my, my definition, I think, is um, a character and an audience in the same place. 
Mm. Uh, and that really is what satisfies me for the for the definition. Because as I was saying, you know, that theater I, I've been it has been told to me once by a, a beloved professor that theater is the most conservative art form uh, in the United States, at least. I agree. And that it seems to not be able to uh, update itself or question the the things about it that. Uh, definitely need updating and oh, need fuck. revision in order to be. Oh, you ran a red fucking light. But I didn't but get, he didn't get caught. It. Oh, good. Well, in that case, we can pretend it didn't happen. I mean, th I think that there might be there might be some structural uh, reasons why that might be the case. The maybe the most like relevant of which is that with theater more than any other art form, it's really it's been far more difficult to tell how the like advances in technology over the last 50 years are relevant to theater exactly right. in ways where it, like music has been transformed in its creation and distribution utterly by computer technology you know literature certainly in its distribution mm -hmm. and, and its subject matter um, it's also and, more and, and I'd say uh, just just before you say that I did that the novel is relatively young mm. and that in yeah. comparison to theater it's it's its form is constantly being it's also more difficult in comparison to newer forms to get a, a, a cross section of what's happening with theater at the moment. With with practically any other form, you can you, it's all laid out before you. Yeah, and you can page through it freely on Google Books. <laughs> uh, it's basically it's, it's 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 basically the only thing. Ex I mean, music still does this to a certain extent, where you can have a really insular scene. Mm -hmm. I mean, art, uh, art, visual art, to a certain extent, but even that, you know, mm -hmm. it's like. Oh, but that that is enormously insular scene. You can, and, and you can both, both I mean, in by, fine I mean, art, by by location, right? Right. But 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 both in fine art and in theater, I think something that we're gonna, we're going to come up against a lot in this conversation is that it is restricted to um, a very wealthy uh, group of people that can afford to go to the theater, yeah, right? and which can afford to participate. I mean, even which, I mean, and that of course is like that of course. Even with uh, fine art, you can get something conservatism. Like, like this here, this this ouch, this like you know what what do you call that thing? The catalog for the the show that yeah, I went yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, right. And you can't really do anything like that with theater. And the catalog's and expensive. Yeah, sure, sure, you know, sure. Like yeah, but it's, it still exists. It's content, it's, and it wants it's, to be it's free. It's mobile content. It, it, you um, could easily make a PDF of that. Right, right. And that that would defeat, as you say, that would defeat the purpose we'll just of of theater. And that would def and that which is why it's it's such a, a complicated. Um, thing to try to maintain in this time. But as I think, as I think Nick was saying, the ha ha having and needing to have by necessity the super wealthy clientele will tend to uh, tend to make something will tend to make something more conservative. And stole, yeah, stole the I mean, I mean, particularly if I mean the cool thing about like you know the same might be said for fine art, but you can have a the point of the cost of entry is lower, and b. <laughs> You can have singular wealthy patrons who are right. able to be transformative, which is not really the case in theater. Well, because it, the, an art object is an investment, and that's sort of the entire business of the art right. world, uh, in a way that theater is not, or can't be anymore, in the same way. And actually, it's funny you bring up music, because the same professor who I love desperately also said, um, you know, you never, I've never gone to a music concert and feel like I have to walk out saying to myself, yeah, I got that. <laughs> You know, like, I, you, he hasn't been to some of the shows that I've been well, but 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 you, but you know what I mean, in that like they don't need to feel like there's a story or that there's something that they have to fundamentally understand. If yeah, were, if well, I mean, there there have been. I mean, I, speaking of the definition of theater, there have yeah. been rock shows that I've gone to where I think you could probably make it or rock shows. There have been live music shows I've gone to where you could definitely make a better case for it being theater than for it being music. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think it's true that if if you went to a theater show like that you didn't have to say, yeah, I got that about, that it was like so simple, that it was easy to understand, then most people would call it overly simplistic. Yeah. Or, or in as in most cases, it's not fully clear or elucidated in some way, and they leave going like, it was, it was over my head and I felt threatened by it somehow. Mm. Right, it's also, you know, like, it has that thing that like performative art does, where or like, fine art in this day and age does where it you ex go in there expecting to be confronted and challenged mm -hmm. um, except like unlike with a lot of that art stuff you're being confronted and challenged in cases literally 
by a person. <laughs> <laughs> like th at the sh at the show last night, some member of the audience, and I have no idea, you know, whether he this was arranged with him beforehand or not. He got a face full of ass, <laughs> like a face full of basically naked ass. Are um, we talking about contact here? Yes. Oh wow. At, you know, that's at, unusual. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It is. But it's like <laughs> I've seen things similar to it before, like it. Uh, like at, at, at city company stuff, you know, yeah. you can mm -hmm. get, you can suddenly find yourself being interviewed about your sex life, as has happened to me at a city company show. You can find yourself being interviewed into a microphone about your sex life <laughs> when you go to a theater show, which yeah. is like, you know, <laughs> which is also unusual. I mean, like that we're, we're I'm, talking I'm just, about I'm just saying, edgy like, stuff. Uh, yeah, but still, it's like there's there's the the the, the distance between the audience and the and the and the challenge, mm -hmm. like, you know. Like I, I never have to worry. Like if I have a friend who's sensitive to strobe lights. Right. You know, I can never. I never have to. I don't really have to worry. Usually, when I'm going out to most things, that she might have to leave because it's physically painful for her to be in the room. Or dangerous. Or dangerous, right? And like theater has, as it is practiced now, has a number of things that are that are like that. That yeah. should be. You know, they have to run down. There will be gunshots. There will be smoke. You know, yeah. there will be. And and that's that's largely and that, on, now on the one hand that's for safety's sake on the other hand I have to reverse into the truck space I don't think that would even work that the, the, we as we've said many times those aren't the spaces there no but those are behind me no those aren't yes those clearly are no, totally aren't I will bet you I, I really can't tell you <laughs> that I uh, that I am not an oh there totally are you're absolutely right I was getting <laughs> confused. Are you parking? No, he's trying to turn around, and he's not oh, good luck. It. Jeez, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, but well, I, after I do this, I can back up a bit. All right. Oh, you're at a you're at so, a right yeah. angle. Oh, for yeah. fuck's sake! Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> this is gonna end up. In oh no! Gonna oh my god! A second time, <laughs> almost certainly. Just give up on napping, dude. We Why can, are you turning? I have to nap. I have to get into those parking. He has spaces. to get. He has to go sleepies. I don't think the game would accept it if I wasn't. Go to the ne go to the next nappy spot. Forget about this. Nappies. But I'm, I'm 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 my guy is so exhausted. Look at the bed. I, if he does, if where where what is the indicator? That that bed, the blue bed. Oh, the blue bed. If, if it's all full, just here. back into them. No, but I don't think they would count. Why not? Because it needs people my, back in the parking spaces. All yes, the time. it should count, but I don't think it will. Count. Just get, get out of here, dude. This is this is gonna. You gotta you gotta let you gotta do yeah yeah you gotta let this one go, man. I mean, it's just it's a nightmare. I'm not gonna let it go. The next one is so no, far away. No, they I'm always are far away. Go. I'm going. But what I'm going to do is this. You're gonna you're gonna turn around. Yes, I'm going to turn around now. Oh, okay. This is <laughs> is that car smart enough to stop? Thank you. Oh wow, it yeah. <laughs> German driver. Then I'm gonna oh, sneak by all these guys. It's not always the truth, you know. Oh God, I would have done it on the street. <laughs> No, we're fine. Wow. You're carrying ammunition. No, it's it's a fine. gas station. <laughs> <laughs> you know he has a point. I, I, I have to admit that. I can't believe he can't back into a parking spot. He doesn't know that. I'm a regular driver, and like. You know, well, reversing in a truck is hard, fucking shit. Anyway, yeah. so I, was, I wasn't gonna risk it. Oh, thank oh, God. And he naps. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm relieved. Where were we even? Oh dear. Uh, oh, I think. We were talking about sort of the inherent conservatism, conservatism of the theater and sort of why yeah, but we, we need to warn people, you know, when, when you're doing certain things. It's not just because people are, it would actually be dangerous for people, but, you know, it's also because not only is the theater audience very wealthy, or at least, you know, of the solidly middle or upper middle class, it's also very old. And yeah, you don't want to kill the wealthy dowager. And and yeah, and there are people who will be shocked. And you know, in, I, I mean, we're talking about an age that that you know things like that can really be damaging. And that's not a you know it's not a bad thing that the older folk want to go see the theater. Obviously, they were raised on the theater uh, a lot, of them. Uh, and that might even be a stretch these days. But um, if it's limited to them then that means that the future of the actual theatergoer is uh, in a lot of trouble. And it is. Uh, especially because the prices are so high. Especially in the city. Um, and that, 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 that's sort of a major concern for the future and how uh, theater is going to survive. And especially in its form. You know, if it's going to remain so conservative, then I think yeah. people are going to want to see it. There are a fair amount of young people who go to hip shows in Williamsburg, aren't there? Oh, it depends I mean, on what you call. Th that, once again, you are, know, this is the definition of theater. They're still wealthy. Mind there are people who are in theater companies who have friends. Right. Yeah. That that's um, really what it is, and it's like trying to expand that on social media in is extremely difficult. I mean, in a globalized world where everything is mobile, 
uh, the ephemeral sort of value of the theater is extremely small. I find, like, I have a hard enough but if time... But we, if we consider sorry. an arcade fire show theater, isn't it actually extremely large? Well, that's why I say character. Yeah. You know, and that and that's why, you know, and, and not to say that, that arcade fire aren't don't have very lively characters on stage. I'm sure they do. But, like, theater in comparison to... I mean, that's what's, so, that's what's so sort of fruitful is this conversation about music and what draws people to live music shows when they wouldn't do live anything else. Right. Why is it that? Why sports and music and, and Probably these Probably because of they are, they've been sold on the product already by the album. That's also true. Right. I mean, the... There's an element, and, 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 well. and there, there's also like there's a lot of things that a person can get out of a music show that they can't necessarily get out of a theater show. Um, one of which is, of course, the you know the sort of the rec the recapitulation of something which is already familiar. It's going to be a less challenging experience in a lot of cases. Um, mm -hmm. But also the fact that it's a communal experience. And right, you can socialize. Like, right, you can talk to people. You can drink. Right, which is I mean once again the show that I went to last night, which was sort of a hybrid rock show, had a bar on the fucking stage mm -hmm. that you could go up and buy drinks from during, before, after the show, and during the intermission. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like, you can, you can of course talk to people, like, during the, you know, if there is an intermission, which there generally isn't, you know. <laughs> Not anymore, no. <laughs> like, that tradition has died. And really. before, before, like, you know, you can talk to people after the show and stuff, but it's still, like, it's still not a community building thing. You don't meet, go to theater to meet people. No. As a general matter, which often you do at music shows. But I will say that um, historically, that has not been the case. Uh, in, in you know, in, in, if you take time to look at the th history of the theater, particularly in some of the most fruitful theatrical times, particularly in Shakespeare's time. Mm -hmm. uh, people went to the theater and talked all they wanted to, and they still could listen and pay attention and enjoy the show. But they, it was a social experience, and they went with their friends and their family and, and whatever. And they, you know, and they commented on the play on the play as it was happening and whatever. Only with this sort of Victorian value of having to sit in your seat very quietly and you know take everything in very, you know, with uh, well, speaking. I, I was also going to suggest know. that like the artification of the of the form. Mm. Ha has a lot to answer for that because, mm -hmm. like, you're not necessarily expecting an entertainment. Well, that's the big problem uh, because uh, there was this wonderful essay I was actually dipping into before I came here uh, by a guy named Dwight McDonald called uh, Mass Called the Mid Cult, and he was talking right. about how um, you know there's there's in our society today what and he was writing you know, decades ago. But in our society today, there's high culture and mass culture, which is basically a parody of high culture. And right. and in the middle, there has for, and, you know, and and before before mass culture could be produced, there was no such thing as a distinction. You know, there were things that were more popular than other things, and there were things that survived the test of time and whatever. But you didn't really divide them between two different things. You know, culture was culture. You know, uh, music was music. I've always I've theater. always been very much against the, the the distinction between high culture and low culture. Right. And I also I also think that. But theater should probably generally be less afraid of putting previews up on YouTube and things like that. Well, like, there are reasons for that. But the, but suffice it to say, just just to finish the thought, the the idea is that there is this weird middle ground that sort of seemed to form, uh, where people could go and sort of not feel like stupid that they didn't understand what was going on and they didn't feel like they were part of the scene or whatever. But on the other hand, it was uh, uh, um, sort of unenjoyable, it was like taking your medicine, it's like eating your vegetable. Yeah, well, not the vegetables are bad, but that, 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 that it's, it's somehow a good for you experience. Right. And a lot of modern theater that is that is yeah. uh, naturalistic the, the, the in Shakespeare particular. Problem. Right. It's that it's Shakespeare that you're going and Arthur to fucking Miller. Right. You're going uh. it to see you're going there to see it. And a lot of new playwrights too. You're going there to see it because it's good for you. And this is also and a thing like even even audiences who like difficult edifying experiences have very l few resources to tell whether a theater piece is going That's to be exactly the right. kind of edifying experience that they right. enjoy. And one of the reasons I mean I don't go, I don't go to theater an awful lot, and the reason <laughs> that I don't go to theater an awful <laughs> lot is I'm um, right, is because not only is it like an expensive buy-in, um, but also the experience of sitting through a bad play is a really bad experience yes. and since you really don't have a lot of tools even under the best of circumstances to determine what kind of animal the show is going to be before you see it 
Um, and you can't really leave because that is the height of insult. Right. So what are these reasons? Because this is a sticking point for me. What are those reasons for not like? Yeah, why can't you put up previews on YouTube? What's that about? Uh, you you can. They're expensive on the one hand, and if you are if you are uh, in a union company now, uh, we just so you understand, the two people in this room who do do. Uh, we're, the, we're not part of this of the uh, of 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 the, the union. No, the, we're not at the we're not at the higher end of you know yeah. paying paychecks. Uh, the union. <laughs> we have been paid for theater. We have been paid for theater, but, but not very it's much. Not, we're not very much enough. Uh, <laughs> but you know, and so so actually, you know, I just want to also establish that asking me about you know the business of the theater, even though I'm I've come here willingly wanting to talk about it, is like someone burying their head in the ground and I'm trying to tell you what the Earth's core looks like. So believe me, it's not <laughs> not exactly quality simile. I like that. Uh, yeah, but I mean that's that's what it is. I, that, that, just so you understand that this is not. Um, uh, uh, gospel truth, but the 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 thing this is true uh, that uh, the, th the 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 Actors Equity Union, which I have a lot of problems with. Um, I'm a union man. I love unions. I think they're great things. I think in the arts, there's a lot of there's a lot of conflict between what um, younger, less established artists can create and the conflicts that create in these unions. But anyway, they don't allow you to film um, union actors unless it's only specifically for archival purposes and libraries. There is well, no. I mean, this seems like a, a hidebound relic of the past age. That seems extremely dated. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, it is and it isn't, but it's enforced very hard, and it is. Um, the reason is, if you were to film these things, and they were to find their way into uh, a, a digitized world, people could watch theater on their computers and never go see it and they would and that and well, that that's true. on what you digitize I mean you just have to be smart about it I well mean, that's and they do and you can film mi some mi a couple minutes or whatever for a preview you can absolutely do that I mean, we, we made movie trailers for for, for obedient steel something about this yeah so we weren't union idealistic mm -hmm. to me like in in the world we live in now people determine like what they're going to consume by like taking a bite-sized chunk of it and seeing if it's the kind of thing they might like and like trying to like wondering why it is that people don't go see theater anymore while like just kind of promising vaguely that your play is going to be good and you'd like it is like that seems so foolish to me like of course it is it, and 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 I, I I don't think that they're that they are correct in restricting the, the filming of it but I understand that it would fundamentally change what it means Right. To have a, a theater. Sure. I mean, an another and they are they are they are the establishment. Another know? another thing about this is that you know what separate you know we've been talking about what separates theater from music. That's like what separates theater from a movie. Right. And it's like, I mean, I think this is both true and stuff that can lead to some bad decision making, is that you do really lose the ineffable quality of whatever is making the experience the experience if you're not actually in the room. Well, sure, but um, I'm not saying I'm suggesting not, that you should sell the entire play. As a film, right? right. But, but exactly. you can't control that. The moment that it's no, 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 filmed, no, no. and you, the moment that it's on the internet. Well, you, know, you don't put you the whole thing that. on the internet. You yes. put you put an excerpt on the internet. No, you put it, a, it, true. You put a movie trailer essentially on the internet. But the, but know. then but we're talking about two different things because if you if you get, now have either of you ever seen a stage play filmed? Yes. Yeah. It is atrocious. Yeah, it's yes, the it worst is. experience you can ever have. I mean, it but would that, never. But that's the thing. It's like technology has moved on. You're, you're right? taking you a know? very limited view of this. Like, no, 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 but but but, but, but let me. The, 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 but then we're proposing a different thing. We're not proposing you film a couple minutes of it and put it into a trailer that people can watch. That would be stupid. That would be uh, that would be counterproductive. You're suggesting that someone hire somebody. Who can make a quality, you know, cinematic uh, teaser trailer, and then put it on to or something or something. Or something. It's like we what what we did for Obedient Steel was that we didn't actually film any part of the play itself. What right. we did was we filmed the actors like being in character and being out of character. We filmed like we 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 tried to convey a sense of what kind of people we were, of what kind of quality the thing was going to have. Which, you know, those are always my favorite movie trailers, too. The ones that actually, you know, add content that isn't in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, the Stanley Parable demo contains absolutely nothing from the Stanley Parable, just as another example. Right. Um, this is a video game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do play video games. I've I, played that video game. Yeah. 
I, I didn't mean to suggest that you were some sort of uh, <laughs> Just unwashed, establishing. unwashed boob, but... Um, <laughs> I don't play a video game that makes me an unwashed boob. <laughs> Increasingly, within, within, within the context of this particular audience. No, I guess maybe. No, I, I uh, understand. No, I do. I do understand. Really, you're uh, not unwashed boobs. But yeah, yeah, all in all, I think I think theater <laughs> promotion like an unwashed is a, is a territory that deserves further exploration. Well, clear, and, and clearly, it's crying. It's crying out for transformation because every other medium has experienced massive transformation right. in light of and the, there are bands. the huge changes in the way that we you know share information. There are bands where people say, like, even though they have the full album right in front of them, people will still say, well, this is obviously a band that you need to go see live or else you haven't really heard them. Right, but there exactly. is no product equivalent to the album, even if you have a trailer. And and also, as much as you uh, disseminate uh, information about the play, the only people who can come and see it are the people that are there That's at the That's the major problem. And, yes. and, that, and, that, and they, people have tried to solve that. And one of the big solutions that they've come up with... Touring in the companies. Top, well, there's touring companies, yes. But at the, and that, those have always existed. Yeah. But at the top, very top of the industry, uh, they came up with prefabricated plays. And things like um, Phantom of the Opera, which opened in two cities at once. You know, and they were right, the same right. set and the same choreography, and whatever. And well, that like, well, it's like, play, you know, it, it's Lord of the Dance, essentially. Well, yeah, no, absolutely, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's 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 a complete it, it, it's a completely pre prefabricated, commercialized venture, and that play, uh, in particular. It's horseshit. Well, it's horseshit, yes, and you know, like you know, everyone wants to go see it because it's Phantom of the Eyes, it's run for forty years. It, but it's a it's a play that um, completely changed the the environment about what the top top shelf of theater really is, mm -hmm. and that and that has created the, the sort of the, the musical. And yeah, I was I was going I was going to sorry yeah. I was going to mention that. Uh, we're we're talking about this like this problem where it's like if the theater that people who don't like expecting to go see high art would see it's not just the Take Your Medicine Shakespeare but it's the Broadway musical yeah, the Broadway is musical. the most well known thing it's like it, the bright like you can hear people like being like you hear people like being asked trivia questions about Broadway musicals are there fandoms extreme fandoms. extreme fandoms for Broadway musicals which is not true of any other kind of theater and yet there is nothing about a Broadway musical in particular that makes it any less in, that that is that differentiates it in terms of portability or in terms of its you know site specificness right. from anything else. I mean, there is the album, which um, it, which is a very important part of the business. Uh, right. That people sell they sell those albums like hotcakes to people who really like them, and and not only that. So let's talk about Spider Man for and so the so the Spider Man musical called Turn Off the Dark, which is among the most stupid names I've ever come in contact with for any part of kind of media. Uh, was it's, it's the opposite of turn off the light. It was it was millions you and see, millions and instead of turning off the light. You, you, it's I'm like glad you took you, the time <laughs> to think about it. You sucked in like if you had like a if you, you had like a dark bulb, and then you and the, the dark bulb was like disseminating the. <laughs> but what if your dark bulb broke? Look, all I have Would to say about really <laughs> all I have to say about the person who came up with that is the plague on your house. But <laughs> not the, a plague on your house. The, the, plague. the plague on your house. Uh, and uh, but but that cost millions and millions of dollars, and they raked in about six mil a week. Because people understand and, Spider Man. But wait a minute, and they still went bankrupt. Oh. Mm. So. Well, that's just bad business. It's ridiculous. No, it's insane. <laughs> it's 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 um, and that that is the butt of every theater. Uh, this is the blockbuster problem. I mean, don't step on my fucking hard drive. <laughs> Sorry, I, it's warm. My foot was cold. <laughs> now they know so much more than they have to. <laughs> That, I already told the, them how we were dressed. How the hell did that's that true. happen? How, how did that go bankrupt? I don't understand how. What? They, how much were they just expecting to make more money than that? Like no, no. Like, they, I mean, like they, they, they. Bono wrote the music, and Jude Taymor was the director for a time. Did they just not budget it out correctly? It sounds like they were probably. Um, was it out supposed to be a lost leader? Was it going to be a franchise? Did it, it was part of. It, it was part of the. It was part of a franchise. It was like it was. It, I mean, like it, they, they treated like a movie. Was it going, going to have to play for like years and years and years and years in return profit, well, or would no, it have they, continue to rack up debt the longer it was in production? I. I mean, is it the producer? Once again, <laughs> I am sticking my head into the ground and trying to tell you what the core of the earth was. Like, right. This is I do not know the specifics. I'm sure there and, and maybe the, those who are more internet savvy than I am can look that kind of thing up. 
and you can comment about it later. Not like comments. We solicit comments about the future all the time, and yeah, they never yeah. give them to us. Yeah. Well, well, now, now they <laughs> have something tangible <laughs> they can do. But, uh, uh, but I uh, best of luck to you. Uh, but, but I guess my 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 evaluation of it is that yes, they saw how Disney uh, made a lot of money, and I'll, I'll tell you, you know, almost every Disney uh, musical that opens is a hit um, in, to some degree. I mean, like you know, Lion King is like one of the biggest hits. They've ever had. Well, Disney was making musicals already. Well, no, they know. were, but they conquered this idea of the musical market, or this I, this idea of like the musical big budget musicals that can make money right. and were creative in the way that they created. I mean, like you know, that, I don't know if you've ever seen Lion King. It's a very creative. I have, actually, it's a very creative endeavor, and they and they did a good job in making it different enough from the movie that it is an experience to watch, mm-hmm. and yet. Um, you know, linked enough to it that people would say, "Oh, I think it's, it's, but I it's, possi- it's possible. It's possible for a musical to like to become huge and to have like a serious fandom and a following mm-hmm. with that, while still being an original property. You know. Oh, you then they you, do. Oh, yeah. You, you don't. You don't. It doesn't. It doesn't fandom. necessarily have fandom. Is a good I don't know if you call it original, but it's you know because well, it, it is based on a book. But yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. it's uh, or say uh, I, I was, next to normal. I was. It was actually. <laughs> I was hilariously enough thinking of Wicked, which isn't based well, Wicked, on anything. It, surely. <laughs> well, well, based on Except a lot, right? Wicked, of Oz. Wicked, Wicked um, was an extremely popular thing. Now, uh-huh. the other thing that you have to understand is that yes, it's very popular. Yes, it has a fandom, but it has a popularity and a fandom among, among very, very specific demographics. I mean, we're not talking about middle-aged men. Here. Do you know who Christian Chenoweth is? No. If you do, you might belong to this demographic. I don't. I don't know who that is. Well, we're not. Well, but we're not. <laughs> we are not. We are not among. Them. Not among them. And and actually, there was a New York Times article about this recently, where they were saying the amount of men going to theater is just plummeting all the time. Mm. And they tried to make a uh, a Rocky musical not long ago. A, ro- a, a Rocky musical. Dun, bum, 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 bum. Do you think that would succeed? Well, they wanted to get more men into the theater. That this was this was almost an experiment to that end. Oh, well, that's, and that's, they completely failed. It is it, it is demonstrable from that. It is demonstrable that theater, uh, the theater can be wildly popular for men, and you need look no further than the World Wrestling Federation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bar that's, true. that's clearly theater. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, but you know, and, and absolute that is that is theater absolutely. That yeah. fits every definition of theater I could ever think of, mm-hmm. uh, including the costumes. And <laughs> yeah, I, it's got tights. It's got tights. Yeah, it's got tights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, and and hey, you know, going all the way back to Aristotle, if we may. Um, <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> could so, be a nosebleed. So the, the, the six. <laughs> yeah, we went right up to the nosebleeds. Um, the six principles that he says for theater, um, it, and they put they are uh, in order of importance: plot, character, diction. Thought, spectacle, and song. So uh, music in the theater is by no means a new thing. And, Aristotle you know, really liked listicles, didn't he? He <laughs> did because there was another listicle. Aristotle would have been great on Buzzfeed. He would have been a terrific <laughs> Buzzfeed article, right? Listicle writer. But the other thing that, of course, he listed was the, the three unities: the unities of time, action, and place. Um, and almost no theater oh actually God. adheres to it. <laughs> Strangely, um, I, I dinged him with my ammunition, which is now one percent damage. <laughs> well, that's. I'm glad it didn't. I'm explain. glad you survived. <laughs> is where I am with that. But but, uh, but then, um, sorry, what were you saying? But I was just saying that you know we can't look at it too simplistically and say that you know musicals in and of themselves and for their and for the reasons of them being theater pieces with music are the problem here and they're not. Um, there are many wonderful musicals and there are many wonderful pieces of theater with music. No, I, was, I, was, I, was, I wasn't saying they're the problem. Um, I'm saying that no. they're indicative of the way forward, potentially. Right. Because there are things that have a life outside of the initial... That often, but not only have a, have a place in popular media, which, you know, your art has to have at least some foothold in popular media, but also have a place... Whoa, that's like the wickedest switchback I think I've ever seen. Good luck, dude. Thank you. It's on a it's on a slope too. <laughs> You're climbing a mountain with Ram. <laughs> I thought he was going down a mountain. No, it looks like I'm climbing. You're climbing. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, like I, that's a, that's an interesting case study, which we can talk about more. The whole thing about them trying to make a Rocky musical to attract men. Meanwhile, the WWE. Like <laughs> if they just had singing, this this <laughs> <laughs> it's hard it's hard to make singing uh, attractive to men. 
This, this very hard. This and, but, again, and they did it with, with Jersey Boys. Jersey Boys uh, is very much. And uh, American Idiot. I don't know what that is. That's the Green Day musical. Green Day musical? Oh. Uh, they wanted older men who could pay to go to the theater. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted, what are you, are uh, you they saying, wanted. Are you saying that there are young Green Day fans? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, I think when the when the play came out, there were uh, uh, right. I mean, this it, was it, years it, ago. It, not that long ago. It was during the. It was, it was like at least it was like twenty. I know ten years after the after Green Day had had like their hits. But I don't. Still, I don't know enough about this to. I, I, neither I, do I. I'm, 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 I'm talking I'm out of my ass. Now. Yeah, what, yeah. what I'm trying <laughs> to get at is that this seems like further evidence of the the uh, the need for everything to be, if not high art, then at least middle brow. Like, it seems like this is probably hurting the the uh, the theater world. What, what what do you think? I think i like I've talked to my girlfriend about this a lot. I think that definitely hurts the art world, like the uh, the visual art world a lot. What like does the 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 cult of the high art? Oh yes, no. I mean, like, I mean, this that that kind of takes us into a, a much larger conversation about um, the ways in which high art has uh, or what's called high art. Um, has isolated itself from the rest of uh, the, from the population, and that people seem to think uh, what I'm interested in is not anything that's going to teach me anything, not anything that's going to challenge me in any way. I'm interested in pure uh, entertainment, in what they call guilty pleasure, spectacle, spectacle. But you know, and, and that and that there's a certain pride behind that, and there's a certain you know uh, uh, popularity and poo pooing you know things that are. That, that are that are somehow supposed to be good for you, and then you have to be in a certain mood for it, and whatever. That you can't just be pleasurable in and, and the, of and itself. Well, like there's there, uh, there's definitely sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, you. I was going to say that there's definitely a. I mean, this is a vibe that is that is known in theater, and that there is a there have been intentional reactions to it, some of which have been quite successful, including. That is beside the point. I don't want to spend too much too long uh, bagging on people who you know. I feel yeah. like there's a false, <laughs> that would be great. I feel like there's a false dichotomy at play. I, I feel like it's it's completely untrue that what is frequently called low culture can't teach you anything. I mean, just just look at Star Trek. Like, no one is let, saying let no one is saying that Star Trek is mass culture, and we're it not going to talk about Star it. Star Trek no, is totally it, mass culture. It is, but and here's the thing: like, Star Trek is frequently sort of faulty in its in its uh, in its moral in its didactics. In its yes, it's sort of faulty in oh. its didactics sometimes. But reaching your point again, yes. didactic nature. But in its faultiness. It's like, also the most theatery fucking TV show ever. Yeah, I, I from, mean, yeah, we were talking the, about from the that staging to the actors to the. I, I've seen this firsthand. In its faultiness, like people will talk about it to death in the Star Trek fandom. Like talk about whether the Prime Directive is really that like that valuable uh, 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 a system of ethics, and like people be people because of the, their Star Trek fandom will will come to these moral realizations about what Star Trek is kind of wrong about sometimes, and this is. Low culture being educational, mm. like and even even sometimes the when fans it's, are being educational with themselves. Well, but that's you can't as a you direct result of I, I, as separate them. as a person who is a member of the Homestuck fandom, you can't separate the, the way that the fandom thinks about the thing from the thing itself. Well, right. th this is this is where this is where my expertise ends once again. I, I really don't know uh, about the relationship between uh, sort of. Active conversational readership, or you know, the, when you boil it down, my point is that you can read the fact that it has caused these conversations to happen indicates that there is that there is there's value. No, I, and there's, even even issues if, have been raised, even yeah. in cases where there's like no didactics whatsoever. Like mm -hmm. you can read highfalutin messaging into anything. Yeah, I mean, and, and like, <laughs> and frankly, like, I mean, but, but this is what we do. This is frequently and, it's easier to do but, that with uh, low culture know, than with high culture. And, sure. and it's like because low culture is less subtle about it. I mean, the idea that there isn't messaging, there isn't like content in low culture. Look, like watch an episode of Law and Order for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like it's true. This, he got me with that one. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the. I mean, low, most like the high most low culture is mostly concerned with the reifying and reaffirming of popular conceptions about reality, because that's how you are successful in doing that. But that is definitely content. That's just because it's within line of the mainstream doesn't make it apolitical. Yeah. Um, no, and I think we've discovered that time and time again with um, lots of discussions that I've been hearing recently about. 
uh, inherent racism in, in mass media or inherent uh, sexism or whatever in advertising and all these kinds of things. They are inherently political because we're surrounded by it. Yeah. And we are fed suggestions by these things. Mm. But um, in the theater in particular, uh, the stultifying conservative bent of where a lot of the stories, you know, and, and this and this is a this is a big um, complaint about a lot of media. Most plays uh, that we have in the biggest theaters, the most grand theaters, that are straight plays, straight plays being a word for it, plays without music, um, they are about wealthy white families. And their problems. Absolutely. Uh, that doesn't search much beyond that. Unless they're written by by young, artsy like envelope pushers, in which case they're usually about young artsy envelope pushers. Indeed, it, it, people write about them. They write what they know, right. <laughs> <laughs> to put it simply. And uh, that and be and that's because the people who not only the people who can see theater, but the people who can participate in theater. Are limited to those who can afford to spend the time doing it. Yes, and, and that and is, is an becoming, enormous problem. And it's becoming more and more as as basically every economic gatekeeping is becoming more and more of a factor in so many things, from like where you're able to live to what kind of jobs you're able to get. Even Not, what kind of video uh, games I'm, you can play, weirdly. Yeah, I mean, it was ever thus, of course, yeah. but like <laughs> more now, more than now than it, more now than ever, particularly in terms of sites that used to be. Like physical sites, physical locations, and scenes that used to be, you know, their their initial attraction was that they were you could just go there and do it, mm -hmm. and that's certainly not true in New York anymore. And and, when, and let, let's just look at a historical context again, in just the same way that you know, the theater used to be a social experience where people go to talk and have fun and you know and and uh, have a, a social interaction for the evening. Theater used to be manned. By the lowest, most impoverished uh, members of society. You really didn't want your daughter to be. No, <laughs> that was. A, 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 and at a time they couldn't be. At, a, at one time, theater was all male in, mm -hmm. in, in Elizabethan England. But I'm just saying that you know, theater was once populated by by the lowest and the meanest and the people who were dedicated dedicated oh, to I it mean, as I a means of life. I think it it's still populated by. The oh lowest. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, say that. That, true. <laughs> And you know, but but I'm just saying that, and, and I'm not saying that 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 they were they were lowly or mean in any way, but that they were poor and right. that they were struggling with life, and that this was and that the theater was their was actually what they lived on. And making this class, making what has become a de facto class barrier for small theater because of the sheer cost of doing business and the yeah. sheer cost of living in the place that you need to do and making a living while at the same time doing theater has of necessity impoverished. <laughs> <laughs> theater itself. Yeah, indeed, it has. And, it, and, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about that, because I think it's really fascinating. One of the reasons that it's so difficult to make theater, not only for you know reasons that the economy is, dif is at, at a difficult point right now, but it's also because uh, the land value in a lot of cities has, has skyrocketed, and a lot of the landowners of the big theaters, the Schuberts, the Niederlanders, please don't kill me if I say these things, uh, they have all shot up their rentals mm. for the highest theaters. So we're talking about, you know, going up six, seven percent in rent. That's an enormous amount. And given uh, the prices that we're working with here, yeah, yes. the, 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 this is this is a, a, a tr tremendous amount of money. So nonprofit and commercial theaters at the highest level are now paying more money. And of course, everything mm. just dominoes down. And so then they can't they can't efficiently pay for the theater, so they have to raise ticket prices. And the only way they can get people to go see the plays are is another this is another hobby horse of mine is that they hire television and film actors mm. to be in the highest roles in at least in here in New York City. So you're going to go see Brian Cranston play. I am going to, and I and, and, and I'll do it again. I mean, like it's it's not. I'm not As saying God that, is my witness. I'm not saying that I'm uh, that I am free of this, but um, it is a big, big, big problem when there are people who have spent their lives and there are a lot of money studying to work in the theater and they no longer have access to the top of their profession. Yeah. They, they don't have access to these things. And one of the deals that they made, you know, AEA, the Actors' Equity Association, which is the Actors' Union, and the Screen Actors Guild, also known as SAG, have, <laughs> uh, have made a deal Saggy, where, Saggy you know, it, where, where it's basically interchangeable. A, an an act, Actors' Equity actor can Perform in a movie, right. and a SAG actor can perform in a play. However, they, the, the Actors Equity has, in my opinion, completely relinquished its responsibility here, and has not protected the theater actors who are trying to make it in their city and in their home. And then, in the other end of the spectrum, they don't allow them to be in smaller things that can't pay them as much. So they're now stuck 
in a place where they can only serve in uh, either you know middling roles at the top or no roles at the bottom. Tear it all down. Yeah. So, Blood and thunder. Uh, this, no, I this would never revolution. advocate that. I would never advocate any theatrical take revolution. Over the if the theater people took over the world, we we'd be in take over tremendous just, trouble. Just like most of Forty Second Street. Oh, but they'll, they'll, they'll you know you give an actor <laughs> an inch, they'll take it. <laughs> this this kind of thing plays out again and again in art. Like when it, when it becomes prohibitively expensive to produce or to see these things, it always. Things right. always like become mu so much less artistically interesting for the most part, and it because it has to be done speedily. And yeah. It has to be done within a certain. Budget. But this is the time when the next wave of indie shit comes out. Yeah, it always is. Like this is usually this, this which is why there's which is, and which is I'd why we are, are, are a what thing. We're doing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we are, we are, we are, we're not there yet. Like the yeah. true the true thing about that is that it needs to. They need, there needs to be something more, uh, more deep down transformative. There needs to be something that actually acknowledges new media. There has to be something that, that in some way transcends some of these like structural issues that we're talking about without like you know making theater something entirely else and turning it back on these you know seven millennia plus history of uh, of theatrical endeavor. What about shit like improv everywhere? Well, that see, that's different, and that, and I and I would say that <laughs> just a thought. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I really no. I really appreciate you bringing that up because I feel like there's there's a thing about comedy now that is different from the theater, and uh, and I would actually include it in that list of like sports, music, and comedy. Uh, people people go in droves to see stand up comedians. Comedy has, has changed a lot over the last three years. A lot, also, a lot uh, has changed. The advent of the stadium comic is just like a completely new thing. They become rock star um, stand up philosophers. Yeah, and uh, I, I I I appreciate that. And I think I think it's wonderful. Uh, I just you know. I don't understand, and and of course you go there because you're, these people are reliably entertaining. They're going to make you laugh, you know. Mm -hmm. The people at the top of their profession. Um, so th that's another sort of interesting facet of sort of the live thing. But once again, these are people who can sell albums and who can sell uh, specials, and you can watch them on television on Comedy Central or whatever. And there's a there's a competitive field around it and. You it's know. also just about like the, that's the you know if you're not going to be a rock star you're going to be a comedian that's a, it's the essence of cool to be the funniest guy in the world. You know how I see things playing out if I may play Oracle for a moment, please. I see theater as we know it pretty much dying, like all but dying, except for the <laughs> except for the big stuff. You're not the first person to say theater is dead, and believe me, you're not the last. right? And all all but the fortunate few, essentially. But then, like things like music and uh, comedy, just in uh, gradually uh, producing. At first, side acts, and then like the entire goddamn performance, something which is indistinguishable from how we now think about theater. You're talking about a multidisciplinary melding. Yes. Is that what you're trying to say? Okay. Well, you know, people have predicted the demise of theater before, and, and that's not good. but I, I I I agree that there is a fundamental shift. Coming. As long as there are rich old Jews on the east side of Manhattan, there will still be theater. Well, there probably won't be. Mm. <laughs> They're all dying. Yeah. Surely but, their kids will move into I mean, those apartments. Once it, now, this is these are these are platitudes that come up throughout the theatrical community all the time. They're like, "Oh, when all of them die," but you know, I, it's 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 um, it's a shame that we have to think of it that way. I, I don't like thinking of it that way. I think that there are way. I mean, you know, ultimately, there's that question of what 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 will that what will that shift be? What will that host of theatrical performance and 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 really the theater relies upon community in a way that all these other things do uh, but it relies on a, on a local community that knows each other and sees each other and can interact and with one this another. is well, the, the thing the, the, the which, is, which is right now just our friends <laughs> I, mean, well, I mean that sort of thing it's like the feature that the feature that I see and the, and the one that I advocate is the we take we we take the community mm -hmm. we dig it up and we plant it in somewhere that needs a community that's not overstuffed with you know Chuckle fucks like ourselves, aka not New York City. Not New York City, um, because maybe like maybe the future of theater is not have does not have to do with the future of uh, electronic media because there's something in the theater which is actually you know relatively structurally inimical to electronic media. But maybe it has to do with the f change, the fundamental change of foot in the usage of space. 
Um, yeah, well, that's and for sure. The and like the and demographic changes and these and the the wastelandification of so much of the urban space yeah. in the country. What I want to do is I want to like you know. Uh, well, I mean, what I want to do is incredibly problematic anyway for reasons of gentrification and because you can't because cash rules everything around me. They can get the money, dollar dollar bill. But why don't um, you just say it? And we'll, <laughs> then we'll judge whether or not. Uh, well, it's it's it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, well, I mean, but it, it's essentially just that you know. Um, go somewhere is cheap. There, it's go somewhere is cheap is the is like is the fun of it is like part A, but part B is you know. What does a f what does a flesh what does a real life community mean at this point? What are the centers of gathering for communities? Um, well, that's what the theater has to revitalize in and of itself. That's, that's that, its well, that, well, that's what I was saying. It's yeah. like you need to. I mean, unfortunately, I think that you, what you do need to do is get back to the question of the, of functionality right. in theater, and it's like if and creating a. Sp Creating performance space which is truly accessible to everyone in a particular community can revitalize that community, um, ideally without like just making it unaffordable for the people who are already living there. Yes, you know? that's extremely important. And so I think that I think that like the future of good theater is all about actually. Uh, is all about making these sorts of performative and artistic decisions which take advantage of the use of theater as we've seen in like you know all these studies about early childhood education and stuff as a thing that uh, that transforms the way that people interact with another being in theater and acting with each other and cooperating on this level transforms the way that people are which is why community theater is such a great thing even if it doesn't necessarily produce great stuff. Unfortunately, <laughs> the fact is that we are, because of who we are, we are excellent people to make uh, indie theater in New York because of our, the resources that we have and the, tra and the training that we have. We are not the best people to try to do what I think ha needs to happen to theater. Right. So we have to retrain ourselves. <laughs> yes, all of those things are true, and I, and, I, and I think that you're right, that to be cautious about what we think we're capable of is an extremely important thing. But, you know, on the other hand, trying to mute or limit yourself based on what you think you have the right to talk about is something that I have a lot of trouble understanding. And that if you feel like there's some place that needs to hear what you have to say, go there and say it. Uh, and, and I would not want to discourage anyone from attempting to do something that they feel passionate about just because they think that there's going to be some kind of patronizing... Uh, tone to it. God, where are we taking this ammo? <laughs> I'm, to I'm telling you, man, this is not <laughs> like duck hunting ammo. This is this I mean, is the real thing. But you know, and also, you know, one of the one of the greatest revolutions in the theater, I think, in the past few years, has been uh, Augusto Ball's Theater of the Oppressed, which mm -hmm. is theater that seeks not to not to teach but to legislate. Oh. It is theater that is not about trying to. Uh, tell you the lesson, like you know, uh, the way they have it, in, like you know, colleges and high schools of telling you how to behave with other yeah. people, or, right, 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 or right, telling right. you, you know, what, what, how to, how to accept a, you know, a, a, a mentally disabled person in your life, you know, like telling you how the to the after school things. special school, the after school theater. special theater. This is theater where it's like this is a situation you need to legislate what the end of this trail is, and right. it's not choose your own adventure. It's voting. It's like. Oh getting that it's right. seeing it it's seeing a situation in the community you live in and make and making people decide what the best way to deal with it is. right the, it's like the the playing on the, what the strengths of theater are is which are specificity and engagement yes the ammunition is late the revolution will surely fail <laughs> <laughs> there goes the oh, theater well. uprising <laughs> oh dear well uh, I'm so sorry to hear that. If, if only you hadn't clipped into that fucking traffic. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, for you know, for we want of a nail, the the kingdom was lost. Well, we wouldn't we wouldn't have gotten those few extra minutes, I guess. Okay, all right, that was good. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>